Welcome to this video tutorial on creating rocky landscape textures using displacement maps in V-Ray for Rhino. I'm going to be using this simple scene here and we're going to be setting up a kind of rocky texture on this outside kind of plane here. Now at the moment we've got just a kind of white material on this plane but we're going to be creating a kind of rocky landscape that's going to fill in this surface. Now for this texture I'm going to be using this particular kind of rocky texture found on a website called Polyhaven. This can be downloaded for free and you can download sort of different texture maps to control the sort of characteristics of this texture and I'll put a link to this in the description. Now to create this texture we're just going to open up our V-Ray Asset Editor like so. We're going to make a new material here, the materials and generic and in this material we're going to first set the diffuse color as a bitmap under the texture options here and we're going to locate that rock material I've downloaded and we'll just make sure we're putting in the diffuse which is the color map of that rock texture into that slot there like so and we'll just hit the back button to go back to view the material and we'll just call this rock now Now, currently, the only thing controlling this material is that color map we've dropped in. And you can see the little square next to the diffuse has gone blue, which tells us a map has been inserted here. Now, I'm now going to apply it to my surface just by selecting my surface, right clicking on my texture and clicking apply to selection. If we then select our view and hit on the V-Ray interactive render option, we can then load up a test to see how that texture is being applied. Now at this point you might want to map the texture to increase or decrease the size of it on this surface. To do this I'm just going to move this over to the left slightly and we're going to select the object, go to the properties panel, panel under texture mapping, we can minimize that for now, and just check what the XYZ size of that texture mapping on the surface is. You may need to apply particular mapping to that surface. I've already applied the box mapping to mine and I'm just going to increase the size of this because currently it seems that this texture is a little bit too small on that surface. So we're going to increase it to sort of 3000 by 3000 and I'm working in millimeters. So that's a three meter by three meters by three meter texture. And there kind of looks okay. We might want a little bit larger. Let's maybe set it to four. And once we've done that, we can then be happy with the size of our texture. So I think that's about right there. Now, what you can see is we've applied the texture, but it doesn't really look like a rocky landscape at this stage. It's very flat and we need to actually change the terrain of this surface in order to give it the characteristics of this kind of rocky landscape here. Now, to do that, you have to use something called a displacement map. And a displacement map is essentially a black and white texture that can control the height of certain objects in the scene and they look slightly like this here. Now whatever's white in this image will be pulled upwards in the scene and whatever's black will be dragged downwards, i.e. it will kind of change the geometry of that surface based upon the light and dark parts of this image. Now the way this works is that under our texture we can click on add attribute and we can add in a displacement map here. Now by default that will be turned off but we can turn it on there and if we click on the little arrow to the left we can open up the displacement parameters. Now what we'll do is under the texture slot we'll drop in a bitmap image and we'll locate that displacement map for my particular rock texture here and it will give us a preview. We can hit on the back map and then we'll go back to the scene. Now at first you probably won't notice a difference on that surface and this will be because of the amount the texture is being controlled by. Now this value here is based upon the units of your scene. So I'm working currently in millimeters. So at the moment it's only displacing the texture by one millimeter. So it's really not a very high amount which is why I'm not seeing any difference. If we now up this to a much larger amount of let's say 100 millimeters, i.e. 10 centimeters, hit enter, 
and now we can see that that surface is starting to change slightly. I think that's still a bit low, so let's actually ramp it right up to a thousand and see what happens here. So that's a one meter difference. Now you can see how this effect is controlling that texture. Now one meter obviously is way too much for this. So we're gonna to have to find a sort of happy medium. And I think we'll go down to 300. And often with these textures, depending on the scale you're using them, you need to just play around with the value until you get an accurate amount. And I think about 300 actually is working quite nicely for me there. It might be that you then want to adjust your lighting based upon that particular texture parameter. It might be I want my kind of lighting to sort of come out more from the front to light this scene up like so. And you can see there that the lighting will change based upon the surface of that material there. And we're getting this kind of nice rocky landscape happening here. And that in general is pretty much the only two parameters you need to play around with with this material. You might find that there's certain reflection parameters you might want to add in, maybe certain parts of the material are shiny, and that really depends on the kind of maps you're given with the texture here. Um, you'll see there's also a normal and a roughness. The roughness can be used to control that sort of shininess of the object, and we can always drop that one in. But I think for now that's actually working pretty much as I'd like it to in that texture. But you can always play around with some of the other maps and add them in there. Because displacement map geometry is actually changing the surface features of this object, it reacts really well to different kinds of lighting. So what we can also do is we can play around with the lighting in this scene to create a nighttime view and then relight this to add some drama to the scene. So if we put this back on an interactive render, and I'm going to go to my document sum here, and we're just going to Add, change the lighting so we've got a kind of nighttime scene. So I put the lighting below the horizon level there to create this dark nighttime scene here. Now what I'm going to do is with the render still open in the scene I'm going to create a sphere light and we'll make one kind of over on this side and we'll just sort of move it out of shot slightly there and then in the sphere light parameters, let's make this a kind of red light here. And we're going to up the intensity to a, a hundred there. So we've got this kind of nice red glow on the scene. And we could always maybe let's make that 200 actually to make that a bit more intense there. And you can see it kind of now casting against all the surfaces on a displacement there. We can also create another one of these. Let's make it kind of at the front of the scene this time. And you can see it's kind of casting a reflection in my glass there. If that happens and you don't want it, you can always go into the options of that second light, make it invisible and make it not affect the reflections and it will disappear. And with this one, let's make this light a blue kind of color. Let's make it quite nice and bright. And same again, we'll up it to a kind of 150 lighting colour. Make it make it a little bit more blue there. Maybe 250 on there. And we can always move that around until we're getting it a nice kind of atmospheric lighting. And you can see that it's because of the sort of geometry of our rocks we're working with, you can create really nice dynamic lighting in these scenes where it will pick up the kind of surface details that you're getting with the displacement map with the artificial lighting you're using. So thank you for watching this video tutorial on the creation of a rocky landscape using displacement textures. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on material creation, please check out the videos in the channel.